In this video, I'm gonna walk you through some of the most important things you need to do before starting your PC build. I have a list of seven things or items that are important in order to have a smooth build and avoid pitfalls or setbacks. Let's get rocking. This video is a part of a larger series that you can check out in the YouTube cards above. I'm going to take you through an in-depth journey that will give you everything you need to build your own video editing PC. We talk about how to pick your parts, how to prepare for your build, building the computer, and how to get it up and running. If you want to check out the parts or related videos I'm discussing in this video, and if you want to skip ahead to certain parts of the video, I've included timestamps and links in the description below. Again, any of these products mentioned will be in the description below. And if you do make a purchase through one of those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. The first thing you want to make sure you do is correctly choose your PC parts. When it comes to building a PC, there is a lot of different information online. And you know what? Basically, most of it is correct. However, it may not be correct for you. Depending on the use case of your computer, you will need to make unique choices when selecting your parts. Spending 30 to 40% of your budget on a GPU is very common for a gaming PC, but would essentially be a poor use of your budget if you're choosing a video editing PC. You would be better off getting a high-end CPU and more of a mid-tier GPU when building a video editing computer. I have made a full video covering every single part that you need to correctly choose when building a video editing PC. You can check it out in the YouTube cards above or the description below. All right, item number two is to collect your tools. For the most part, all you will need is a Phillips head screwdriver, but I would make sure to get a magnetic one. It is easy to drop the small screws that are used to build a PC. So if you have a magnetic screwdriver, it is going to make it easier to retrieve those screws without turning your PC upside down and shaking it all around upside down. And that's never a good idea. Some people are concerned that a magnetic screwdriver will affect any of the components. Um, the simple answer is no, the magnetic, the magnetization, the magnetization if that's how you say it correctly, uh, is not strong enough to hurt your components. Um, as I said, you will most likely only need a Phillips head screwdriver, but I have picked up a full kit just in case I come across any out of the ordinary screws or things. And you can check out the kit that I've picked up from iFixit in the description below. Number three is to organize your screws and hardware. If you are not careful, you can easily have components, screws, and accessories all mixed up. So it is best to pick up some organizers. You can pick up a silicone mat, you can pick up a, bit, a plastic bin with slotted little compartments, or you can get some of these magnetic screw trays, which are super handy and you can get multiple sizes. You can snag these on Amazon and like I said, I'll link them in the description below. Next up on the list is thermal paste. Does your AIO or air cooler come with thermal paste pre-applied? If not, you're gonna to wanna to pick up a small tube and apply it before mounting your cooler onto your CPU. Don't cheap out on thermal paste. Spend the extra few bucks and get some well-rated paste. I went with the Arctic MX4 thermal compound and it's worked great on my builds. Number five is to plan your cable management. Before starting to add components to your case, take a look at the instruction manual. Usually there will be recommendations concerning cable management. Take some time to look at your case, plan it out, think through where your parts are gonna go, where the best place to run the cables is, where on your motherboard is the SATA cable gonna go, where is the power cable gonna go, where is the GPU gonna be mounted, so on and so forth. If you take the time to think through your build ahead of time and organize it, you'll have a much better build experience in the long run. Do this right, you don't wanna be stuck with terrible cable management. If and when you want to upgrade your build in the future, you don't want to have a mess of cables you have to untangle and get all jumbled out of place. Trust me, it's not fun. I've taken apart some builds before and having poor cable management is really frustrating. Um, keep in mind, it wasn't my build. It was another build. Decide how you are going to secure your cables. As you see here in the Be Quiet case, they have these Velcro straps. I really like this. That means that if I ever wanna upgrade my computer, all I have to do is undo these Velcro straps and rerun the new components through the Velcros rather than cutting or snipping or moving all these wire ties and zip ties and duct tape or whatever else you use to build. 
I think Velcro is a great supply for securing cables. Don't worry about ordering zip ties or twisty ties because a lot of components come out of the boxes with those already. So go ahead and just reuse those. Personally, I prefer the Velcro like I was just saying. So you can order those online. There's a few links in the description below for different sizes and types or colors of Velcro that you can order. All right, one of the most important things you can do when building your PC is pre-building it outside of the case. The reason you wanna do this is because it'll be far easier to troubleshoot issues that you may run into when building your PC. It is crucial to test your components to make sure everything is in working order. So before you take the time to put your components into the case and really neatly cable manage and get everything just right and fine tune everything and then go to fire up your build and it doesn't turn on, you wanna make sure you troubleshoot that out of the case. Many builds have required a complete teardown simply because of a bent wire or misplaced plug. For instance, I built a PC a while back and it worked great out of the box. So I knew, okay, everything's in working order. Everything's spot on. But then when I went to put it in the case, it wouldn't work. I pulled it out, it worked. I put it in, it didn't work. That helped me understand that the issue was in the case. Come to find out I had put a standoff in the wrong place and that was keeping the board from sitting level and flat and getting good connectivity to all the wiring. So that's a big tip too. Make sure all of your standoffs according to the user manual are in the right place because that was not a good scene. Although pre-building your rig outside of the box can't spot all the issues, for instance, like setting the standoffs wrong, beginner mistake there, it will help you troubleshoot the problem to knowing where and what is going on. So for instance, my issue is in the case, not out of the case. And it really helped me understand how to do that. Now, I have made a whole video about testing your components before you start your build right here in this series. So if you're ready to get started with your build, then go ahead and join me in the next video. And I'll take you through the first steps of building your PC out of the case testing them and making sure everything works well. However, if you're just joining me for the first time, then head back to the previous video where I will help you correctly choose the PC parts for your video editing build. Keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you in one of those videos.